So, today, I'm going to read some of these things that I've written. Um, I might get into a minute, but we'll see how it goes. There we go. But I definitely have a couple things here that I keep in my nice little box. That's where I kept them the whole time. Um, I wrote these. Well, this one, I don't know when I wrote this. Um, right before, I think right before I went through what I did on August 14th. This was like between July and August, I think. Uh, this one was before. Alright, so this is the one I'm going to read first. I need to drink. Chip! Alright. Cool. Hmm. The shackles I've held on myself kept me prisoner in my own body. I made myself believe that's just how life should be. If I was locked away, it was easier to keep away. They became computerized and directed my every move. They told me how to speak, what to feel, and who I was to be. They told me I was nobody. How dare I speak for me? Nobody cares about anything I have to say. Don't try to get to know me. I'll just push you away. There's nothing inside worth knowing, anyway. No one wants to hear the words I want to say. The shackles are locked and there seems to be no key. The prisoner was me, and I had no desire to be. It took a long time to get to this time. Freeing myself was an obstacle itself. It took years of courage through continued abuse. The shackles were strong to keep a tight grip, so tight sometimes I'd completely shut down. When all is turned off and they can't and they continue to scream, it's really hard to find any power keys. When I shut down, your words found a way to dig further down. It felt like one day the tension in me would just cave in and suffocate me. You destroyed my darkness with heavier black to diminish any chance I had to ever come back. Freeze. I can't make my lips move. I have so many words I desperately want to say, but something makes me keep them inside. Freeze. Words have always been hard for me to say. One day I decided I'm desperately doing my best to remove these shackles, so I turned to myself and said, There's only so much more you can take. You need you. Then slowly but surely I was learning to speak. Little by little, I remembered I have voice. I started to see outside my distorted reality. People like what I had to say. The code was complex, the file needed found, but once I searched, it was obvious. I typed in the code and it took me some time, for sometimes I couldn't see. I was almost done I was almost done and finished the code when you sparked something wild in me. Jump start the engine and finish it quick. Get to the point and start moving your lips. One day I realized my voice was my power. That was the day the weight I had carried for so long left. All the time the key was always me, and the courage was my only friend, and from then on she realized she only had herself, not knowing her worth. Face your fears with a dash of you. I really like that one. Um, it says so much, and in so many ways, and like, more so now than it did, you know? Um, this one. These are none of these. I don't know what they're. This one I think is called. Uh, just a program right here. This one, first one I read. This one I believe is called. It's always been you. I don't understand how you consume so much of my thoughts, how my soul aches for you to the core, my heart exploding out of my chest from beating so damn fast, how it feels that you feel me and how I feel you, without touching or even being together, as I am here and you are there, but we're together aching to physically be together, even writing it doesn't make sense, or any easier to explain, this feeling. It's like somewhere in the universe where souls live, we are as one. How the fuck do I explain it when I'm having trouble grasping it? When I don't even fucking understand it? How do I make sense of something that I know is real? Because so many tiny things add up, and so many big things along with it. Timing of all of it is so crazy sometimes, like how many times we come back to each other and how many things happen, so many details matching. And how we silence ourselves, but talk louder through silence. This feeling is something kind of scary to overwhelming. It's out of this world, it's unreal. But real as fuck. It overwhelms me sometimes because what is this feeling? I don't even know if feeling is the way to describe it or if it's the feeling it, it's outwardly, inwardly connected to something untangible but in you. Like you and me have called our souls from our bodies to meet up and see if our humans are ready to keep them from running away. To meet if they are ready. Keep them at home. They're ready. 
I don't know, that one. Like the spring of 19, I believe. Um, yeah, actually, I, I did. Wow. Made a connection. Burp, burp. All right. What are you doing, Kennedy? He's playing. So this one. Yeah. This one I wrote is the one I wrote from when I turned 33 to August 14th sometimes. So I turned 33 July 1st. So in a month and a half, sometime I'm in between there. And I, I titled it The Hug Metaphor. The hug signifies comfort, acceptance, relief, for one single second at least. Someone else reminded you, hey, you got this. In a world that is constantly trying to make sure you don't even have a fingernails grip on the fuckery that we have to put up with on this side. The force is, or do a little, we have to put up with on the outside forces. In that moment, someone helped them to remember to fucking breathe because together we got it all. A world where every single nanosecond a mind can race through 472 scenarios, fantasy or real, doesn't matter. That puts it at about a trillion billion thoughts per single minute. Just to have one second where you didn't have to worry or to work to remember or to take the time out for it. Don't ask if you can help and then do absolutely nothing when the answer was written out in flashing lights with arrows pointing saying, answer for this. Like that. Answer for this. Even with the answer, the equation isn't solved because the direction say, show your work. Show your work. Well, now fuck. I have to figure out from the a billion tabs I have, billion open tabs I have, how I got the answer. All I know is I have it. I gave it to you. Do with it as you will. But don't do nothing. That needs more. Yep. Yeah, that's gonna have more. Because this this I don't like that part, but I mean I like it's great. But I do like the rest of it though. Like, sh they want you to show your work. No, I just want to hug. <laughs> I've been working. See it? Can you see it? What's up? What up? <laughs> All right. Let me this is all my work that I've been doing right here. These are all done, complete, front to back. These ones are mostly done. Um, there's something, I don't know, right where it's at. This one. I wrote this on December 2nd, 2020. Watch me rise because your projections won't enter my energy. You all have underestimated me, which shows me how powerful I am, because that is exactly what I wanted you to do, to think of me. And no need to watch your back, my light illuminates for miles around me. You'll see that long before I approach you in your hiding spot, I am not fearful of the dark. I know those hallways, <clears throat> and I have hidden every spot that you could find. I know those depths very well as I helped write the map. I am a sorcerer of darkness there. I am the one they come to when the light enters. That is my kingdom, and I know it better than the back of my hand. I am the one to fear, not the light, because I have become that, so I could come back to the light and be the one to enter the darkness and save the world. I am the one to link between darkness and light now. I am the duality. I am going to pull people from darkness and serve justice to those who pulled our people out of light. This light you tried to kill because you knew I had it within me to do this? I scared you so much you locked me, then you chained me and bound me in the darkest dark not knowing that that was exactly where I wanted to be because there is where I could see everything. 
I became so powerful without you even knowing. And you thought you could put my light out there. Little did you know, I was in control the whole time. I turned my light off and thrived in that darkness. It was darker than the darkest corner. I walked those corridors seeing everything because my eyes held my light. And that is where you all never looked or thought to check. That is how smart I am. I think of ways to make me look just as you want. I look at all sides of the box I live outside of. Watch me now. This angel has done exactly what we came here for. Y'all just don't look at the stars. That was a channel message I received um, that day. Let me see. Oh, I don't even know. No, no. Okay. Um. Okay, here's a good one. They say you dwell in your past when you bring it up. And you put out the truths of who you are. And you keep it from... Bring out the truths of who you are. And that keeps you from healing from your past. Bring it up and talk about it if you need to. And in the ways you need to. Today I talked twice about my past. The same kind of relation to the era of whatever time of the past I was releasing and speaking truth about. It helped me realize so much of who I am in the now. Having people who listen to me and not having my mother in my life has been the biggest key to healing from what I dwelled in. Upon to those who don't want you. To feel anything but excruciating torture. She has to undwell that. Yeah, okay, I know I said that now. All the time. I actually forgot I wrote that. I didn't forget, you know, I never forget anything. I just, I have a lot. Um, we'll share, like, something in here. And then I'm going to pull a card or two. And then I'm going to go about my day. It's been a great day. Hope you all have a great day. It's a great day to have a great day. So much love in the air. So much recalibration aligned. I have a song in it. It's like, oh, Looney Tunes. Is that how good? I think so. I don't remember. All right, so now. All right, so. Um, oh, here, this today says the calendar of the day. I found this. It was on my birthday. It's an intuition based, and it was on my birthday. But today is September 5th, and it's 1 Corinthians 12 4. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but they all come from the same spirit. Be who you are, because if we were all the same, boring. I don't want to be like everybody else. I love who I am. We all have, we're all just as equally important. Like, just, nobody has better gifts than you. And you saying that makes you not realize your potential. So, don't be envious of anybody because you have no idea what they went through or what they, you know, what they signed up to do or why they're here. And I would, if I could, give them all away. But I can't. They're mine. But I am going to give them away to my son after this, you know, to my children. Um, retro stage. That was the tag on this dress that I got. I got this to bring in 2020. Instead, I just got... It was not a good, not a good time. This is the first time I wore this dress. Okay, so we're going to pull a card. Which one? Which one? I think we're going to do a light worker. Oh, yeah. I got five keyholes the other day. Oh, 
You guys gotta look at that. Ready? Look at him. Whoa! And his shirt and everything. Ask the light workers what we need. We're all ascending and crossing the Rainbow Bridge. Here we go. It's happened very rapidly right now. A lot of met like solar energy and magnetizing energy and a lot of it. Like Sometimes it's like I'm a man. But I should do that again, huh? Not the same. But together, we are crossing this bridge that we've all been working really, really hard at getting there. All of us. Everyone has been doing amazing work. A lot of, a lot of us are um, not giving ourselves enough credit for the work we've done because we're comparing ourselves to somebody else and we need not to do that because not everybody does it the same. We all do it different. And just because, you know, you're at one place, that doesn't mean that that person's not exactly where they're supposed to be. Like, we can't look at it like that, you know? That's just like, like we're all where we're meant to be when we're meant to be there, always. And by thinking that you should be further ahead or, you know, where that person, no, that only hinders you from growing because you put a limitation on yourself because for no reason, I mean, no, not for no reason. I'm sorry. Because of the limiting beliefs, um, that we are so conditioned to believe that we are nothing. We're we're something. We are something. All of us are something. And I've spoke these words before. And I will say them again. You're something. And it's something magnificent. And you deserve everything that is right here. Waiting for you. On your back. And why wouldn't you? I mean, if you don't deserve it, then wouldn't be on your path. Silly. That was just... It was bad. Right. Okay, so we have one... Mm -mm. No, so it's not that one. There's, there's just one message. I had a really profound meditation last night. really, really profound, and like, trust in the plan, see, always where we're meant to be, just trust in the plan, trust in the time, I had an epiphany about that time, I thought it was the time I was born on, like, my birthday, no, Mm-mm. On August 14th. At night. All that. So, trust in the plan. We are always where we're meant to be. And we are rising. And we are spreading our light. And we are connecting to a whole new system. And it's going to be filled with love and compassion, kindness, and love. It is an amazing feeling, love is. Truly. I went my whole life really not ever really knowing what it was at all. Then my son. And he did teach me some. More, you know. 
Love is the best. I was, I was thinking about it. Thinking about love. And how beautiful love is. And the many ways that it's all around us. Love. Love is all you need. And I have shared a lot of my parts of my story today, like on my Instagram, I shared some stuff, um, here now, so, I'm not scared of any of my truth, and I've been speaking it, just as I should be this entire time, and I shouldn't have been doing more or less, because we can't compare to, you know, like if I would have compared my artwork from this year, to what I did last, in, from 19 to all I did was art, paint, paint, draw, paint, draw, paint, color, everything. I probably did like a, I don't know, I got 36 canvases back from storage. That was not counting any of my stuff here um, in a year. Or the stuff I'd given away or any of it. Like, that was just what I got back. And it was more art than, like, art with my escape, but I can't compare like when I did this because I did a lot of writing I mean sure I did some art but I didn't really didn't really art art and all that so don't compare your even to your past self because you're evolving and growing and you can take parts of your past self that you like and like take them and grow it but you're never, we don't go, like, we don't go back there, so you can't change it. You can just learn from it. So as long as you're not holding on to, well, in the past. I don't care what we did in the past. It's over. Forgive. Forgiveness will heal you. I have so much forgiveness to give. And I've given so much. And... That's it, I think. But I'm hoping, you know, I'm not, I'm not hoping because, but you know, in the right time, all will be as it's meant to be, when it's meant to be, whatever. And I'm grateful for everything that I has happened for everything that I've learned for everything that you all are for all that we are like I couldn't be who I am without you so thanks I just had a moment. Maybe I should write real quick. No. Yes. Second ray of wisdom. Download. Thank you. Downloading information of wisdom. Allow yourself to receive. Have a great day. Bye now.